Welcome to the Proton Guru video practice for topics 7.3 through 4. These problems will give you practice on infrared spectroscopy. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these types of problems and interpreting infrared spectra can be found in lessons 7.3 through 4 of the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2019 by Professor Hujiri. And you can find additional chemistry videos and information how to match these videos up with whatever textbook your course is using at protonguru.com. Let's take a look at our first spectrum. This is practice problem number two from lesson 8.2 in the primer. And when I look at this spectrum, I can initially check to see whether I think there is an aromatic species. That's what the decision tree in the primer suggests you look for. And what you should see would be some sort of CH stretch corresponding to a CH on an sp2 hybridized carbon. We see something in that general region. We should also see some overtones in this region, really small peaks, and we don't see anything like that. This area is completely smooth, so that might roll out the aromatic right there. We should also see a peak at around 1500 if we have an aromatic due to having the benzene ring, and we don't see that either. At that point, we can conclusively say, okay, there is not a benzene ring in the product. Now, once we've ruled out the benzene ring, our decision tree suggests that the next thing we might look for is a CO double bond. These are very easy to pick out in an infrared spectrum because they usually give you a really strong peak right around 1700. But we don't see anything like that in this spectrum either. So we can rule out both of those compounds as being responsible for the spectrum as well. And next we check for the CH stretch at around 3100, and we definitely see that there. And if we think about what type of compound it could be, we should have that if there is a alkene in the structure because the CH stretch for a carbon with sp2 hybridization comes around 3100. Now we can rule out F. F doesn't have any sp2 hybridized carbons. It shouldn't give us a peak in that area. Now to differentiate between these two compounds that both have alkene units, we would notice that this unit has an OH group, choice D. The OH peak would usually give you a band in your infrared spectrum, something like this, a broad peak the far left side of the spectrum, and we don't see that here, so we probably don't have a compound that has an OH unit in it. And this leads us to the conclusion that we have compound A, having the sp2 hybridized CH stretch, the sp3 hybridized CH stretch, and the CC double bond stretch that you can check for to confirm again, another way to tell you'd have an alkene in your structure. Next, let's take a look at problem four from the lesson 8.2. And now if we start to look at our decision tree, we see there is a peak at maybe 3,050, maybe 3,100. Is a peak at around 1,600. We do see the peaks at around 1,500. And we do see some type of little peaks around the 1,680 to 2,000 range. In this case, right around 1,900. These are all indications that we have an aromatic ring, a benzene ring, in our species that gave us this spectrum. And this makes this a very easy choice. Only one of our potential products has a benzene ring in it. So next let's move on to problem six. If we again check for the benzene ring, we don't see any CH stretches over here that would be attributable to a, a CH stretch on an sp2 hybridized carbon. So we don't have any of these compounds that have sp2 hybridized carbons that have hydrogens on them. Now these two choices, they do have sp2 hybridized carbons, but they don't have H's on them. And stretches over here would be attributable to a CH stretch when the carbon has sp2 hybridization. And next we check for the CO double bond peak, which usually comes in this area, right around 1700. And here we see a peak right here. So that's definitely a CO double bond because it comes right in the correct area and it's very, very strong as CO double bond stretches tend to be. So how do we differentiate between B and C, the only two compounds we have left that have CO double bond? Well, again, it's this OH unit that's found in molecule C that will help us differentiate these two compounds. Remember that hydrogen bonding units have somewhat broad peaks. They tend to come over here on the far left side. And an OH peak particularly has this really broad U-shaped peak. We don't see that in this spectrum. So the absence of that peak means that we can't possibly have molecule C. 
and therefore molecule B is the answer. And to double check ourselves, we should see sp3 hybridized carbon hydrogen stretches, we should see the CO stretch, and we should see a CO stretch for the ester. Now let's check out problem 8 from lesson 8.2, and we'll have a different set of choices now. Let me take a look at this spectrum. First, we do see some type of peak over here as a shoulder at around 3100, maybe at 3050. We see some peaks of that nature, so we probably have some type of sp2 hybridized carbons with hydrogens on them. Now, at that point, we might roll out compounds A and B and C. If we had compound B that has an sp hybridized carbon which has a hydrogen on it, that would have a peak over here somewhere to be relatively strong. So just by looking at the CH stretch region, we can almost determine its compound D, but let's double check this and make sure we have the right compound for sure. If there were a triple bond in our compound, we should see a peak in a really diagnostic area of the spectrum. You don't see notable peaks in the 2000 to 2500 area unless you have a triple bond. And in this case, we see a peak there. So that's definitely some type of triple bond. Could be a CN bond, but in this case, it's a CC bond. It's the only triple bond choice we have here having already ruled out B due to the absence of the necessary CH stretch. And then we can look for the benzene ring attributes. We should have a peak at around 3050. We should have some overtones, a little bit of small peaks in this area. We should have a peak at around 16 something. And we should see the peak around 1500 for the benzene ring mode. And we see all of those. So this is the correct attribution to molecule D. So finally, let's take a look at practice problem 10 from lesson 8.2 in the primer. And we'll take a look at the peaks. We don't see any peak here around 3050 or 3100 for sp2 hybridized carbon hydrogen stretches. And we don't see any peaks attributable to a CC double bond. So we can't have this compound that has a aromatic ring in it that we found for our previous Furthermore, if we look for a CO double bond, it should be around 1700, and we don't have a CO double bond either. So if we don't have a CO double bond, we can't have this compound or this compound. So by process of elimination, we might assume it's compound B, but we should check out whether it has the appropriate bands. You should have a CH stretch where the C is SP hybridized. So an SP carbon hydrogen stretch comes around 32, 3300. And we should see the peak for the CC triple bond, and we do see that as well. So this is the correct assignment for this. We'd see a CC stretch with a triple bond. There are some sp3 hybridized carbons that have H's on them. And there's, of course, the sp hybridized carbon with the hydrogen as well. And you'll see a stretch attributable to that molecular unit as well.